Uh, program director, Mr. Tavani, uh, the media spokesperson, the director general of the Department of Home Affairs, uh, Mr. Tony McCord. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming within this short notice. This is a press statement on the granting of exemptions to the Lesotho and Zimbabwean nationals in terms of section 31 subsection 2 subsection b of the immigration act number 30 of 2002 as a background exactly eight years ago the erstwhile minister of home affairs decided to grant exemptions to the lesotho nationals in terms of section 31 subsection 2 subsection b of the Immigration Act 13 of 2002 under certain terms and conditions. The decision was taken due to prevailing circumstances at the time, including easing the burden on the asylum system and the fact that most of the affected Lesotho nationals were in reality uh, economic migrants. Uh, the Lesotho and Zimbabwean nationals, I mean to say. The current exemption permits were granted in 2019. The permits issued to the Lesotho nationals pursuant to the set exemptions uh, regime are approximately 54,653 people and will expire on the 31st of December. 2023. Exactly in 30 days' time, that's why we had to call this press conference today. Same process was followed in respect of approximately 178,000 Zimbabwean nationals starting from 2009. Now, I want to take you through the provisions of Section 31 2B of the Immigration Act 18 of 2005. Section 31.2b of the Immigration Act 18 of 2000 bestows upon the Minister of Home Affairs wide powers to grant a category of foreigners the rights of permanent residence for a specified or unspecified period when special circumstances exist which will justify such a decision. I have considered carefully the following special circumstances. One, the exemptions issued to the Sotho nationals will expire on the 31st of December 2023, and the validity of the exemption permits issued to Zimbabwean nationals was extended by the Minister's Directive Number 2 of 2023 to the 31st of December 2023 and by the court of law, as you know, to the 28th of June, 2024. The decision not to extend the exemptions granted to the Zimbabwean nationals is a subject of litigation brought by the Helen Sussman Foundation and others. The application for leave to appeal to the Supreme Court of Appeal, SCA, has already been launched. Following dismissal of the application for leave to appeal, uh, the negative judgment, the parties are still in the process of exchanging 
the necessary court papers. The outcome of the set application for leave to appeal to the Supreme Court of Appeal or any other appeal process is unknown at this age. We don't know what the outcome will be. Nobody does. We are also considering the Department of Home Affairs budgetary contain. We also saying the affected Lesotho and Zimbabwean nationals continue to be employed or study or conduct business in the Republic of South Africa. We also noticing that the need to avoid unfair and differential treatment of the same category of foreigners in similar circumstances and all other relevant factors. Maybe let, let me explain this uh, 4.6 of treating people in the same category differently. You are aware of the decision we took about Zimbabweans, which, as I've said, is in court. It is now time for expiry date for the Lesotho exemption payment. Whatever decision we take about them should not differ in any way. In other words, whatever treatment we give to Zimbabweans and Basotho must be the same. Otherwise, it will be very inconsistent with what we are doing. So let me start with the Lesotho nationals. I have decided to grant exemption to approximately 54,653 Lesotho nationals for a period of two years. The affected Lesotho nationals will be entitled to apply for new exemption permits under the following terms and conditions. Number one, a holder of the exemption permit will be entitled to work, seek employment, and conduct business in the Republic. Two, a holder of the exemption permit due to expire on the 31st of December 2023 or such extended period of validity will be entitled to apply for a new exemption permit. Three, a holder of the exemption permit will be entitled to sojourn in the Republic of South Africa during the validity, during the validity of the exemption permit. Four, new exemption permit to be issued will expire on the 29th of November, 2025. As I said, that's for Basutu National. A holder of the exemption permit will not be entitled to apply for permanent residence in terms of section 2526 and 27 of the Immigration Act 13 of 2002 or any other provision in any other law irrespective of the period of stay in the Republic of South Africa. Six new exemption permits will not be renewable. Seven, a holder of the exemption permit will be allowed freedom of movement between Lesotho and South Africa or any other country uh, for that matter. Eight, a holder of the exemption permit cannot change his or her status in the Republic of South Africa as contemplated in Section 106 of the Immigration Act 18 of 2002 during the validity of the permit issue. Nine, when a holder of the exemption due to expire on the 31st of December 2023 or such extended period apply for a new exemption permit, he or she must disclose and or register all the minor children born and staying in the Republic of South Africa. I now move over to the Zimbabwean nationals. I have decided to grant exemptions to approximately 178,000 Zimbabwean nationals for a period of two years in terms of Section 32.2b of the Immigration Act 13 of 2002. The affected Zimbabwean nationals will be entitled to apply for new permit under the following terms and conditions. 6.1, a holder of the exemption permit will be entitled to work, seek employment and conduct business in the Republic of South Africa during that period of exemption. 
6.2, a holder of the exemption permit due to expire on the 31st of December 2023 or June 2024 and such extended period of validity will be entitled to apply for a new permit. A holder of the exemption permit will be entitled to sojourn in the Republic of South Africa during that validity period. Four, exemption permit to be issued will expire on the 29th of November 2025. A holder of the exemption permit will not be entitled to apply for permanent residence in terms of Section 25, Section 26, and 27 of the Immigration Act 18 of 2002, or any other provision in any other law, irrespective of the period of stay in the Republic of South Africa. Number six, exemption permits will not be renewable. Number seven, a holder of the exemption permit will be allowed freedom of movement between Zimbabwe and South Africa or any other country during that period. 6.8, a holder of the exemption permit cannot change his or her status in the Republic of South Africa, as contemplated in Section 10.6 of the Immigration Act 18 of 2002 during the validity of the permit issued. When, number nine, when a holder of the exemption permit to, to, due to expire on the 31st of December 2023, or 28 June 2024, you remember that the two dates, one, the first one, was determined by the department. The June one was determined by a court of law. Or such extended period for a new exempt permit, he or she must disclose it and or register all the minor children born and stay in the Republic of South Africa. Maybe I, I need to repeat this. The Department of Home Affairs, before the court case, extended the Zimbabwe exemption permit to 31st December 2023. And a court of law extended it further by six months to 28 June 2024. And we are saying a person who falls in those two categories, he or she must disclose and or register all minor children born and stay in the Republic of South Africa. I have issued directives extending the validity of the exemption permits in respect of the Lesotho National to 31 December 2024 and in respect of Zimbabwean National to 31 December 2024. The directive has annexed here as annexure A. The directives are annexed here to S annexure A and B. The directive will be published in the Government Gazette on Monday, 4 December 2023. It will be seen from the directives in respect of Zimbabwean nationals that approximately 78,126 of those who applied for waivers and 10,427 of those who applied for other visas are afforded certain protections while they await the outcomes of their waiver and visa applications. In other words, there is no need for them to apply for new exemption permits as the validity of their expired exemption permit has been duly extended. Uh, I also need to explain this, colleagues. You remember while the court cases were going on with the Zimbabweans, we said we have given them several concessions. The first one being they apply for a waiver from the Minister of Home Affairs, which waiver allows them not to go to the Department of Labor to look for a certificate. And, and I think I need to explain this further because many people don't accept, don't understand it. They believe it is a uh, 
it is an issue of of that happens with a uh, critical skills list when you apply for a general work in south africa the act says you must go to the department of labor the employer yourself or the uh, prospective employer must show that the work they want to give you they have searched all over the country through adverts and other means and there is no south african who can perform that job there is nobody that's why the employer is going across the border to look across the borders to look for somebody else if the department of labor is convinced about that they give you a certificate which you bring to the department of home affairs the department of home affairs will then give you a general work visa now these zimbabweans this 178 zimbabweans we said they can apply for a waiver from that so that they no longer have to go to the department of labor because many of them years back when they were given these special concessions one of the conditions was that you need to have a job or you need to be studying or you need to have a business so they were given knowing very well that they are in jobs if they were not in jobs they would not have been given so now that they are in jobs via a, a, a special a, 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 a particular dispensation you cannot then say no go to the department of labor and let them establish uh, that no south african can do this job because when they were given this permit long ago it was on the base that they've got a job in south africa so so we are saying those who have applied and get waivers they don't have to apply again and the people who have applied is 78126 and all of them were busy giving them those waivers because all they need is to prove that I have already got a job in South Africa anyway and we are giving those waivers. Now, out of those who have got waivers, 10,427 applied for other visas. You remember that was the, the, the reason for this whole exercise. That apply for any one of the 17 visas because we are ending this special dispensation which we used to get. But those who did not apply for the waivers, there's nothing we can do. They need to go to VFS and, and, and start all over again. It's not my fault. We have given them the opportunity. We extended it many times, as you know. So I call upon all the affected Lesotho and Zimbabwean nationals to make use of the windows of opportunity to apply for new exemption permits through VFS. I also need to explain this. We've been asked many times about this Zimbabwean exemption permit being extended, given for the first time in 2009, then in 2014, and in 2017, which was to expire in 2022. People call those extensions in terms of Section 31 2B of the Immigration Act. You don't extend, you can't. You give them a new thing. That's why if you look at the Zimbabwean permit, it had three different names. The first one was called DZ, DZP, Dispensation for uh, Special Permit for Zimbabwe or something. I forgot the second one, but the most recent one is called ZEP. They were not given names just because of. It's because in the act, you can't extend. You, you allow them the opportunity, but you give them a new permit. And this is what we are asking. But we are saying for those who have applied for waivers, there's no need. VFS Global has been instructed to distribute this press statement and directives directly to all affected Lesotho and Zimbabwean nationals, which means VFS must issue more than 54,000 letters to Basotho nationals and more than 78,000 letters to I mean, uh, 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 sorry, more than 178,000 to Zimbabwean nationals. Without any further delay, VFS Lohupal has also been instructed to fast track the application process for new exemption permits. A dedicated team will be set up to deal with the application for new exemption uh, permits. I thank you very much.
Thank you, Minister. Um, good people, we will now move to questions. Uh, we will start, of course, with questions from the, from, 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 from the House here. Uh, same protocols. Uh, please uh, identify yourself and the organization you represent. Um, in, indicate, please, by a show of hands. I've got the first hand in the front. Uh, I'm sure we're still dissecting o o o over to you. Thank, thank you so much. I, I see why we had only one hand. It's a uh, representation of the <laughs> minister. May we, may we for now uh, request responses to the, to the first sets of questions? Yeah. Thank you. Well, the, the process that we must undertake in the next 24 months, uh, Obviously, as I said in the statement, that will set up special teams. Uh, it is common knowledge that part of the problem we're having in the Department of Home Affairs is the human resource capacity, which Treasury is dealing with. That's why last year they gave us 266 million rand to hire 700 extra workers for Home Affairs. But that, that's not where we need to be. So we will keep on trying to increase the human capacity in order to deal with these problems. The second question is about the Refugee and the Immigration Act. You said the new act. If I'm not mistaken, you're talking of the white paper, don't you? Yes, you are aware that the white paper we have invited people to give inputs until the 19th of January. I don't want to preempt anything. Uh, and talk about the white paper now. I've been asked by several media houses to come and address colloquium and symposium about the white paper. I have asked them to excuse us until people have put in their input. Because we don't want to preempt them. We don't want them to say, oh, I was attending a symposium. This is what the minister said. So my input does not mean anything. We want to hear what the people are saying. That white paper is for consultation. And please give us that opportunity. The last question about visas being expensive. You know, I'm not sure what is wrong with us in South Africa. There's no way in the world where there's a free visa. It does not exist. Visas are expensive exercise all over the world. There's no question about it. You need a visa, you pay. I, I want any single South African who applied for a visa to UK or US and never paid any money. They pay. And, and simply because in South Africa sometimes we love this issue of getting things free. Even when you start doing what other countries are doing, they believe it's abnormal. I want to give you an example. Very recently we discovered that South Africa is issuing a passport at much, much less the cost of producing it. A passport, which means we were subsidizing a passport 
very heavily. And we argued, then, or I argued, a passport is taken by people who are relatively better off. Because you don't leave the country and cross boundaries if you are not better off. Why are we subsidizing the passport like this? An ID is taken by everybody, even the unemployed, but it doesn't enjoy the same amount of subsidy. So we hired a service provider to benchmark with other destinations around the world. And that benchmark showed that our passport is the cheapest. We are virtually giving it free. And, and we decided to change. But to change that, the act says in consultation with the Minister of Finance. So we doubled the cost, and, but the Department of Finance said, no, this is too much. They brought us much lower. And we, we're not, we have to take it because the act says in consultation. But we don't believe it should be that way. So all over the world, visas get paid for. And I don't understand any other person who will want a visa in another country and believe that they'll get it free. Anybody who knows any part of the world or any country that does that, tell us. We'll go to them and find out how they do it. But for now, you apply for a visa, you pay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Um, let's check. Let's check on the WhatsApp groups. We will come back to you, my chief. Let's check if we've got the questions. Ish Ishmael, help us out. No, no questions as yet. Uh, we, we've got your hand. A, 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 any other hands before we take the questions? Yes, we, we've got. We've, we've got. We've got one. Uh, um, a, 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 any more questions? It's a follow-up. Uh, so we will take them in this order, uh, starting at the back, and then we'll come to your to your to your question. To your question. Um, oh, Minister, we are ready to to take the the next question. Over to you. Over to you. Sir. Over to you. <laughs> this year. Thank you. Um, back to the SAPC. Thank you. Um, Minister, I'm sure we're, we're ready for the answers. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, earlier on, just before answering this question, I was arguing about uh, the amount paid to visas. And the DG here, because he's dealing with them, just gave me some few. A student visa in the UK, if you apply to the student visa in the UK, you're going to pay 490 pounds, British pounds, which equate to 11,265 rand. That's not what you are doing in South Africa. It's far, far less than that. Visitors visa, just to visit. 
for a period of six months is 298 pounds and etc uh, etc et i don't think i need to read them any further uh, the the questions here for the second round uh, Uh, I think it's newsroom, yes. What informs the numbers of the visas issued? It is informed by the number of people who applied for them. When, when the people were called, when the decision was taken in 2009 to give this special dispensation of Zimbabwe, later ZEP and all that, people were called over to come and apply. And the conditions was, if you came here illegally, you don't have any other visa or permit to stay in South Africa, but you happen to have a job, or you happen to be studying, or you happen to be running a legitimate business, then come and apply and we'll give you this dispensation. So it depended on the number of people. I still remember when the Lesotho one was due for expiry, and we had to issue a new one in 2019. I received a call from the then Minister of Home Affairs in Lesotho. At that time, we were having 98,000 Lesotho who had them. He said, no, 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 Minister, please move it to 200,000. I said, what? But it's 98,000 who applied for the first one, and we, we are dealing with them, not new ones, those who have already held it. Why now do you say 200,000? And he simply said, no. At the time, South Africa made the call for people to come and apply. They went into hiding. They didn't come because they thought it's a ruse to send them back home. Now, when they realize that is true, you are really giving them ex 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 exemptions and uh, you know waivers. They started believing it, but it was too late. So it's them who determine. It's not us. Meaning, if hundred thousand people apply, you give hundred thousand. If fifty thousand people come, you give fifty thousand. If 10,000 come, you give 10,000. So it's not us uh, 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 we, who decide on the numbers. The issue of measures, what measures do we take to make sure that the correct person applies? When they were given ZEPs, for instance, or LEPs, they had numbers. And each one of the applicants, apart from giving a proof that they've got a job, or they are studying or they are running business. Each one of them had to present a police clearance from their country. That police clearance have got their numbers and everything. So it's for a specific person. It was a very, not a very easy job. You had to present the police clearance and say, I come from such and such a country. These are the police, what the police are saying in my country. So that cannot really be given to a wrong person unless the police in that other country are the ones who are cheating us. And we have got no reason to believe that they will do that or they will ever do that. Uh, the, the process of getting waivers, my sister, uh, the first statement you said is child care is a critical skill. I can tell you with my eyes closed, it is not. It is absolutely not a critical skill unless we have got a new definition of a critical skill. And I'm not saying it's not essential or important. I think that's what I need to explain, my sister. A critical skill has got a particular definition. It's defined. It has got nothing to do with being important or, or being, uh, uh, yeah, being important. A critical skill is a skill that is needed by the economy. But people who can do that job are in short supply in the country. If a job is very important, extremely so, but you have got lots of people who have got the capacity to do that job, it does not become a critical skill. That's by definition. That is why during fe around February for the past four years, when we were dealing with the renewal of the critical skill list, which was done for the last time in 2014, we had lots and lots of people from different professions fighting us that, no, you are undermining my profession especially lawyers. They were fighting and saying, no, but why don't you put law here as a critical skill? 
because it's important. Of course, their right is important, especially these days where everything is, is, is decided by a court of law, everything in the country. So anybody who studied law is very important. But we've got many lawyers. We've never been short of lawyers in South Africa. No way there's an indication that we're short of lawyers. In 2014, a person like myself, who passed a junior degree in medicine, was a scarce skill. A doctor was a scarce skill. Or anybody who has done nothing, I mean, nursing, nursing, not nothing. Nursing, 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 nursing. Anybody who has done nursing, that situation has changed dramatically. Because the medical school started, you know, graduating more and more doctors. Around about 2010, when, uh, 20, uh, 2009, when I became Minister of Health, we were sending 60 students to Cuba to study medicine. We later increased it to 80. In 2011, we increased to 1,000 per annum. And we continued doing that for quite a long time. 1,000 per annum. That should make a very big difference. So it, it, it stopped being a scarce skill. But people were fighting and saying, no, 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 you are demeaning doctors. Nursing is no longer a scarce skill in South Africa, except four categories of nurses. They are a very scarce skill anywhere in the world. That is a theater nurse. That is an ICU nurse. That is a psychiatric nurse. That is a high care nurse. All over the world, we're fighting for them. And the reason that we've got a shortage of high care nurses and theater nurses in South Africa, they are in big demand in Europe also. We are not the only country that has got a shortage. But ordinary nursing profession out of those cannot be a scarce skill. Same as medicine, I've already given you an example. A person like me who has got an MBCHB, it's not a scarce skill. The scarce skills are specialists. You are a neurosurgeon, you are a cardiac surgeon, you are ENT specialist, you are ophthalmologist, all those are scarce skills. But ordinarily, medicine was a scarce skill from there. So it's not about importance, ma'am. And so, if there is anybody who can convince me that taking care of a baby is a critical skill, meaning it's a very important job needed by the economy, and we have got no South Africans who are able to take care of babies. I'm going to deny that. I, I won't accept it. It's not true. When the, the war with truck drivers started in Durban, I was just arriving home at first. When the truck started burning, we met the owners of the trucks to argue because the unions were saying, no, we as South Africans are being thrown away. Nobody is hiring us. And that's why there is a fight. Where are we going to work? We are also drivers. Uh, but only people from other countries are being hired. So we asked the truck drivers, is that true? I mean, sorry, the truck owners, is that true? They didn't deny it. But they said, some of our trucks are a scarce skill. And if it's a scarce skill, we can take people from other countries. What does it mean? It means there are no South African truck drivers who can drive such a truck. It means so. And I told them straight that time, I was just arriving, I said, no, I don't believe it. Then I said, even if it might be so, let us see if it is on the scarce skill list. And who draws the scarce skill list? Who developed it? By law, it's gazetted by the Minister of Home Affairs. But we are not the ones who developed in Home Affairs this scarce skill. We don't have the the, 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 the way with all or the knowledge or the capacity we don't have. We go to the Department of Higher Education. That's where people are trained in skills. And we said, please develop a scarce skill for us. Even them said, no, they don't necessarily have the capacity. They send it to the Human Science Research Council to research it, look at the labor market survey of the country and research it. When they finished, they are research and wrote the results and, and write the results. They send it to NetLeg. You are aware that NetLeg is a, 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 an institution that consists of government, of business, of labor, and of civil society. They sit there and debate these issues among themselves, employers and employees and government. 
and civil society, ordinary men and women who are represented in NETLEC, then they say, hey, yes, these skills are scarce. At no stage have they put child minding to mind the child as a scarce skill. That's why I respond to you like that, man. It's not scarce. It's only that employers uh, just prefer. Yes, it's a preference. And, and so we can't work with preference of individual employers. I, I hope I've answered to fail. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Brother Ish, on your side, happiness. We, we've got a question um, in, in, in the front. Thank you. Minister, another question outside uh, today's uh, topic. Uh, Which one? The, 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 the question no, that I'm we've received. One, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. you know, ju just before answering that question, one of the things that happen in South Africa, which I like people to believe, is that, I mean to understand, is that some of these laws were there already. This is the Immigration Act passed in 2002, part of which in the white paper not part of it, all of it. We want to repeal and start from the scratch. Because some of the laws appearing here are not being applied. And people believe when we start applying them, we're starting a new thing. Let me, I want to read this on the work visa. This is Regulation 18 of the Immigration Act 2013 of 2002. Uh, regulation 18.2 says an employer, the employer shall ensure that passport of his or her employee are valid at all times known. That's not the one I, I, I want to read. That's section 3. An application for a general work visa shall be accompanied by one, a letter issued to the prospective employer by the Department of Labor to the effect that a certificate has been issued to the department confirming, number one, that despite a diligent search, prospective employer has been unable to find a suitable citizen or permanent resident with qualifications or skills and experience equivalent to those of the applicant. That, that's what the certificate is looking for. Have you searched all over South Africa and found that there is absolutely nobody throughout the length and breadth of South Africa with 62 million people who can perform that work? Number two, the applicant has qualifications or proven skills and experience in line with the job offer, with that offer job that is being offered. And three, which is being ignored, which causes uh, my sister this uh, preference, it says the salary and benefits of the applicant are not inferior to the average salary and benefits of citizens or permanent residents occupying similar positions in the Republic. I'm sure you are aware, because we have said this many times, the Minister of Labor has said it, that employers prefer to hire certain people from outside the country because they pay them lower wages. But the act clearly says, when you hire that person from outside, it must be clear that their salaries and benefits are not inferior. They must be equal to somebody who is a South African. I can assure you with my eyes closed, this has not been applied in many instances. And in Home Affairs, we are going to push for that. Number four, the contract of employment stipulating the conditions of employment signed by both the employer and the applicant 
is in line with the labor standards in the Republic and is issued on condition that the general work visa is approved. These are the conditions in the Act, which in most cases are not being uh, 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 are not being uh, followed. I have now spoken about something else. I I, I I I forgot the two questions I'm supposed to answer. If you can help, Chief. Yes, yes. You know, to my knowledge, and I was just asking the DG before standing up, we don't have any backlog on business visas. We have got backlog on dependency visas. And time and again we are told this, that we have got the backlog on business visas, etc. We issue them as quick as we can because we want the economy to grow. The backlog we are having and we are looking for solutions is dependency. That means any business person who comes here, they would like to come with their spouse and the family. That's why we are having it tough, because we have taken all our resources to deal with the business person themselves. A CEO of a company, a person who is going to establish a business. Uh, and, and, but we keep on hearing this backlog on business. For instance, last year the president had an investment summit. I think it was in May or June last year, there were about 20 companies which pledged that they will, you know, MTN, Mercedes, German Development Agency and all that, they pledged that they want to invest in South Africa. And after the investment summit, between themselves, they provided us with 3,090 individuals who they said must come from other countries to come and implement that investment. 3,090. By October, that's last year, we have already issued them. But in January, we had an outcry that we are collapsing business, we're doing nothing, and all that. I am not sure why people do this to us. You may remember my last press conference here, for which I was reprimanded, especially by ENCA, and I'm apologizing to them today. I will never do that. I announced another station where I was going to answer some questions. <laughs> And they were not happy to ask the question. It was a question about a German national who was given a job as a CEO of a company. And he went out publicly to say, we are refusing to give him a scarce skill visa. And when we, and you know, Business Unity South Africa came to thrash us, 702 thrashed us, Business Day thrashed us. When we went to check, there was no application. It was not there. And I said, that's how the dark fears, that we issue an application to anybody who did not apply. That person applied only on the 21st of November. That's last week. Last week. Yes. But when we were being lambasted, it was very early on. Now, during briefs, I received a message from my colleague and worked with him very well, Minister Patel. There's no way Minister Patel will leave us for not giving business visas because that's his job, to grow the economy, to make sure that business goes on. He gave us a list of people who said they want to come to BRICS, but they are not getting visas. And I angrily gave the list to the DG. DG, why are we delaying to give them visas? And the answer came within a short space of time. Half of these people did not apply. Please let them hand in their application. You can only deal with an application where the person is applied. And I said, do they want us to repeat what happened with Pastor Bushiri? We charge people and we fire them. Who gave Pastor Bushiri a permanent residence? And of course, they will have been praised that they are very quick. But when the Bushiri permanent resident permit was given, the application had not even arrived in South Africa. It was in the long way in Malawi. I will not allow that to happen. Not again, not when I've seen it. By giving somebody a visa where they have not applied for. Now, lastly, we did not deny that there might be a problem with visas. The president established Operation Vulindlel, where he chose the former retired director general of the Department of Home Affairs, Mr. Mavusom Simang, 
to look at all the visas in South Africa and review them and see how we can make them more efficient, faster and better in this world where uh, 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 there's a lot of competition. He did so. He provided the recommendations. We took them to Parliament. Last week in Parliament, we reported the progress. At least half of them are being implemented. Some of them are process issues, which are easier to implement. Others are legislative and regulatory. The minister cannot just ignore the law. We have put up processes to change that part of the law, if it's the one that is delaying us. For instance, in the past, they'll say, when you apply for a visa, we need an X-ray of your chest. We've done away with that because, as a doctor, I was asking myself, why was this thing put here? I, I don't even have an idea why it was put there, what we're trying to achieve. We threw it away immediately because it's not in any law. It was just a practice. There was also a practice that when you come from, I mean, when you, you are a multinational company moving all over the world uh, uh, to run your company, if you have to come to South Africa, you must get a police clearance from each country uh, uh, where you have applied. We've done away with that. We said it doesn't make sense. You know, we've done away with the period because it was saying where you have been for, for five years at least. We've, we've done away with that. We reduced it to 12 months. So we are really trying something. The last question is about visa free for tourism. And I want to give you the figures. In Europe, 44 countries in Europe, they don't need any visa to, to come to South Africa. You just wake up, you take your passport and you run. We don't demand any visa from you. Whether you are coming to see uh, uh, Kruger National Park or Table Mountain, you want to go to, the, to Durban and all that, there's no visa needed. 44 countries in Europe. You can see it's almost all of them. 26 countries in Asia. They don't need any visas to come here. 36 countries on the African continent. They don't need any visas to come here. 19 countries in North America. That includes the US and Canada and all the other island countries that are mostly English speaking. They don't need any visa to come here. 11 countries in South America. And you can calculate how many countries are there. And three countries in Oceania, around Australia and there. If you calculate your figures very well, they will give you 134 countries. We have got 134 countries around the world who can just come here without a visa. And we allow them in. Those 34 that are left, we have given them an e-visa, whereby you don't have to go to the mission to apply. You apply online at your home, in whatever country you are in, and then they come straight to Pretoria, no longer to the mission where we be. And Pretoria issues an email and say, take this email, go to the airport and come to South Africa. That's an e-visa. So, so we have done that, but that's for visitors. We are now piloting for general work visa, for study visa, and for business. We are for those who need visas. But the majority of countries don't need any visas whatsoever. So it's not only Rwanda that is given visa free. We also do that, but you don't do it to all countries. Because when you issue a visa, free status, you look at three things. Three, and that every country in the world is doing that. One, if you issue this visa, can you guarantee the safety and security of people in your own country? Can you? Number two, can you guarantee the sovereignty of your country? And number three, what are the developmental needs of your country as opposed to the other country that you are giving this visa? Where are you in terms of development? Do you need the country more than it needs you? Even if the country does not give you visa free, can you survive without them if you also don't give them visa free? After you answer those three questions, you then decide to give visa-free 
doesn't happen automatically, and the conditions which Rwanda follows will be markedly different from the conditions that South Africa follows. They are very, very different. And I want to give you an example. And sometimes when I mention it, people get angry. In, in May 2019, I extended visa-free to six countries around the world. One of them was Saudi Arabia. I said they must come here visa-free. Let me not mention the others because it's not relevant. And we gave Saudi Arabia. But Saudi Arabia will never give South Africa visa-free. And people said, no, what about reciprocity? They are cheating you. No, no, no. No, they are not cheating us. Our developmental needs are different. In Saudi Arabia, they have got Mecca, where millions and millions of Muslims around the world are fighting to go there. As I'm speaking today, there are those who have been awarded a visa to come in only five years. So it's people fighting to go there. Here, where is our Mecca? We want people from Saudi Arabia to come here and spend their mega bucks and go away. We need it. We need that type of thing in our development. So we are not going to compete with them. Same as the U.S. I'm sure you are aware. The U.S. is coming visa-free to South Africa, but we don't go visa-free there. We pay those dollars and pounds to get the visa. Same as U.K. We used to go visa-free to the U.K. until people started defaulting our, our passport. That's why I'm so strict with anybody that defaults a passport. Because it affects the whole country, even innocent citizens who get affected. UK then said, all South Africans, when you come here, you must apply for a visa because we don't trust your passport anymore. But if we say, oh, we're going to hit back, you guys from UK, we also need a visa to come to South Africa. We are the ones who will be injured because we need them more than they, they need us here. So in the Department of Home Affairs, when you give visa free, we do that. And for your information, we don't issue visa free without input from state security. Because I talk about safety and security. And some of the things they will never mention in public, what's happening, why they don't allow that visa free from that particular country. The latest country we gave visa free is Kenya. It started in January, isn't it? After a long discussion with them. And what was the discussion? We said, Kenya, we have noticed that there are people who are using your country as a springboard to come illegally to South Africa. They come via Nairobi airport from the east. Can you clamp down on that? Because if we give you visa free, they will just go past. And uh, because they, they came through Kenya, and Kenya has got visa free. And Kenya agreed. I saw a story here everybody sent to me about some people who say they are highly trained, who have been arrested in Kenya. And people believe it was an accident. It's not. We have signed a deal with Kenya that in order to give you visa free, claim down on these people. And number two, Kenya is the first country with which we signed for returns agreement. What does returns agreement mean? Kenya. If we find anybody who came to South Africa illegally via your territory, we send them back to our country. Finish and clear. We send them back, no negotiation, because they came through your country. So these things are not just, we don't just close your eyes and say, oh, Rwanda is giving visa free. I'm also giving it. Other countries give visa free because nobody is going there. They want people to come because nobody wants to go there. So countries are not the same when it comes to this issue of whether it's visa-free and all that. A lot of factors are taken into consideration. And I'm proud to mention, after signing in November last year, visa-free status with Kenya, which started in January. As I'm standing here, we only have to deport four people illegally from Kenya. They respect that agreement with us, and we are very proud of that, and we don't regret that we gave them visa-free status. Other countries... We don't just do so. But you are aware that in SADC, they've got visa-free status with each other. It has got its own problems. I'm not going to mention them because none of you asked me about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, quite comprehensive, uh, such that I trust that we have come to the end of this uh, media briefing.
unless there is a pending issue, Minister, somewhere that we are missing out. Uh, I, 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 I see joy across. We are also covered on the WhatsApp groups. Thank you very much for your attendance and participation at this briefing. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, DJ.